to make it is brought to you by Zobi.com, the official supplier of electronic kits and other fun stuff for Let's Make It. Use code LMIFUN during checkout to save 10% on your order. Visit Zobi.com, that is Z-E-O-B-I.com today to get your 10% off. Hello and welcome to episode number 76 of Let's Make It. It's Wednesday night and it's 7 p.m. That means it is time that we start making things. Yeah. And we're continuing down our stretch of building hexacopters and flying things and the radios that go along with it and all different parts to it. And last week I threw a big curveball at you with a math week. And this week's a little simpler than that. Um, although overall it's in the long run, it's not simpler, but um, it's much more understandable probably because nobody likes math, right? Everybody hates math. So, well, here we are, and you saw in the very beginning of the show, we have our new sponsor, and they're here this week, and they gave us a code that gives us 10% off. That's Zobi.com. I'm going to give you that code straight right down here. So if you are needing electronic parts, and it's something from this show, they I've been promised that things that we talk about on this show, as long as we give them an advance notice, will be available in their store at 10% off. So... Um, that should be a good thing, especially when we start getting into doing the little partsy things again. So they are rebuilding their inventory. They're rebuilding their whole store from the ground up. And they are looking to us for some of that guidance as well. And they're going to be like our official supplier. They're going to carry whatever we talk about on the show. And we're going to start getting some parts from them as well to start talking about on the show and demonstrating uh, whether it's, you know, it can be a part or a tool or whatever. So we're, we're open to doing all that stuff with them. That's Zobi.com. And you just use this little code down at the bottom down here and you can get 10% off. So that's our new sponsor, uh, for let's make it. Okay. This week we're going to talk about, uh, modifications to a radio. So I have, as you know, from past, I do a little flying, uh, here and there. And, uh, my, radio my remote controlled radio um it was inexpensive and actually it's not a bad radio it's it's a fly sky 9x it's also known as by turnigy 9x and a few other names too and it's really inexpensive it's like under 80 bucks and it's a nine channel radio and i think it's like in a whole eight different eight or ten different um configurations for for planes or helicopters or helicopters or whatever and you can switch back and forth use one radio for all of them and it's really inexpensive. It's it's not like super, super nice. And the Turnigy is a little shinier. It's more uh, chrome looking like. But the Fly Sky is basically the same thing. And it's a little more plastically, plast- plasticky, but it still feels good in your hands. It's heavy, has nice weight to it and everything. So why would I want to upgrade it? Well, the internal firmware, first of all, leaves a lot to be desired. It's very cumbersome to get around. It's hard to follow. Um, it's, there's other things that are weird. Um, and being from the United States is it's, it's weird to me. It doesn't mean it's like everywhere in, in the, in the world, but the buttons are in the wrong orders and, and things like that. And you can fix all that with this, this firmware. So there's a couple of groups out there that have, have created open source firmware for these radios and there's different forks of them. So you got to kind of figure out the one that you want, open TX or, um, there's different ones, the EXR9, things like that. So what I decided to do is look at how to upgrade. I kept seeing all these things on the forum, but upgrading it. Well, there's, um, a company or I guess it's a company, uh, called Smarty Parts that makes this little board that goes in this, in this radio and it actually installs a programmer to reprogram it into the board, into there. You can solder manually if you want. They get instructions all over the internet for that. But this company makes a, a board, and you're going to watch you put it in, that literally just snaps in with four screws or, or three screws. And you put a little cable out the back for the USB, and you can program it. And it really is pretty much that simple. The other thing that this radio does not have is a backlit LCD display. And you wouldn't think you'd really be outside flying in the sun, uh, and you wouldn't really need that. But there's many times I've been sitting inside trying to program things and test things, and I really would like to have a light on it. So I also purchased a light that goes in the radio. And so no big deal. That's, you know, add a light. Okay. So you're going to watch me go through and you're going to make you want to see all these changes. You're going to see it after I uh, flashed it and the, some of the differences in it. 
The other thing that I did is on the back of these radios, the radios have come a long way. I remember when I was a kid and people were flying radio controlled stuff. They had these really long antennas you'd pull out and there's like a little flag on the out there on the end and it's like white and purple or blue and purple or uh, white and red. All these different colors. And as long as you didn't have somebody around you flying with the same colors, you were fine. But if somebody had the same colors, you were on the same frequency. And that doesn't happen anymore. Everything's different. Um, it's like 2.6 or 2.4 gigahertz, like Wi-Fi frequencies. And typically you get about a kilometer safely. Um, and the, f- the fly sky is a kilometer. That's what they say is a kilometer. I've never tried pushing it beyond a, beyond a kilometer. The FR sky can do a kilometer and a half, but that's not the reason that I changed this out. So on the back of these radios, there's a little module, it's an RF module. And basically you just pull it off and you pop in another one. So the, the F, the, fr- the fly sky, I popped it off and their antennas soldered together. So I had to unsolder the antenna or actually I cut the wire on the antenna and pulled it out and then I put the FR sky uh, transmitter or, or the RF unit on the back so what that gave me is yes it gave me about a, a half of a kilometer longer or farther away but that's not what I got it for with the FR sky you can say when I run out of range I want you to look like this so you can set all your parameters up if you think about it on a plane or whatever, it'd be, I want the throttle to do this when I run out of range, right? I want the, uh, I want it to uh, turn the elevator or ailerons a certain way. Well, on the quad, most of these smart quads have this, um, return to home feature or, or they call it fail safe. They call it a fail safe. And you can set it so that when you go out of range, that fail safe turns on and it'll start returning to home. Well, with the fly sky, you can't do that when it runs out of range Nothing changes. It just keeps the same numbers that it had. So if I'm flying away and I got a range, it's going to keep flying away and they're going to get it back. Well, with the FR Sky, if it runs out of range, I can say, this is what I want you, want you to do, and I can tell it to do whatever it has to do to my controller to get it to come back home. So that was the the main reason that I did it because I've never gone outside range before, but what happens if I did and it went and it, hurt, and it hit somebody or hurt somebody? I don't want that to happen. I mean, I don't fly that far away generally anyways, but there is potential that I could lose contact with it if I'm in a lot, of, a lot of buildings somewhere trying to do some kind of aerial photography or aerial video. I could run out of range and, and not realize it. Not being, being more than a kilometer away, I could be a building in my way. So I started thinking about that, and the cost of it is not much different than buying it from FlySky. So I had to rebuy a transmitter or the RF module, but the receivers, as I go forward and buy receivers, they're just about the same price. They're a couple bucks more, but they're not like, you know, like literally a couple bucks. You know, we're talking like 25 and 27, so it didn't seem like that big of a deal uh, in the long term. So that's why I wanted to change out the RF module. The other thing that the FR Sky um, receivers give you is telemetry data back. However, I'm not pulling data back that way. I mean, it's set up to do it now, but I get if I'm doing um, video, I'm, I generally have a screen in front of me and because I, I can see what I'm filming, and on there it tells me my battery and the distance and all that kind of stuff. So I don't need to have it on the on the transmitter as well. I see it on my screen. Um, so, but if you're not doing it that way, if you're just going to go out and play around, you know, if you want telemetry data back, the FR sky can do telemetry data back. There's a few other things it can do. It's uh, easily programmable. Well, now I had to upgrade the code on the FR sky receiver, um, to do some things that I wanted to do as far as RSSI signal strength into a, a, one of my controllers. The, and I'll talk about that during the, the segment a little bit as well. So what I'm going to show you here is a segment of me modifying the radio and then, uh, we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about the next steps. All right. So in this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the radios that you use with your quads. These radios can be used for anything, really. They're uh, for planes or helicopters or quads. Um, there's not really one designed just for quads. This one doesn't even have the quad ability. It doesn't say quad in it anywhere, but it does have you know certain things that are tuned for planes or for helicopters. But for a, um, a quad, you really can basically use an airplane or a helicopter, really. You don't need all the helicopter features to fly a quad because basically you have, you know, your throttle, your uh, forward, backward, left, right, and then your rotation or something that would be a rudder on a plane um, or um, the tail on a helicopter. So those are the only four that you truly need to fly uh, a quadcopter. Now, in this case, this radio is a nine-channel radio. It's a a FlySky, which is... Rather expensive. This whole radio here costs like under under eighty dollars when with one receiver came with it. The um and it's a great beginner radio. It's not if you're getting and doing uh, professional stuff, you 
don't you might want to get a little bit nicer radio but for what i do with it just flying around with it this works perfect plus some other things about this one that's very unique and i'm going to talk about that and actually i'm going to do a segment here next that shows me modifying this putting in a board allows me to reprogram it with open source software that adds a lot more features to this than a lot of other radios have so this little cheap radio um, can do a lot more than what you know, you're giving the money, you know, you're paying one of the big, the big people for, um, and it's upgradable open source. The, the community is constantly making changes to that. So anyways, this is an HN radio, real basic. I can turn it on real quick. You can see it has an LCD. Now the upgrade I'm getting ready to do is going to make this backlit right now. This is not backlit, which is a problem. <laughs> um, if you're outside and it's, you're in a weird sunlight situation or in a dark, Wearing sunglasses, the backlit is makes it makes it really nice. And it, the kit that I bought to upgrade this um, came with that the light. So you, when you when I'm putting the, the thing in in the next video or in the next segment I'm going to record, you'll see where I'm putting the backlight on it. It's really easy to do. And um, the company made a board basically that without any soldering, you pro, you can pretty much take this apart, put in. It gives you a USB and uh, a, a burner, just like you would burn stuff to an Arduino. You basically plug into the USB. And you can do your own open source stuff where you can get the, all the stuff that's available on the internet. There's lots of it out there, and they've added lots of features to this. This is not a real high-quality radio. Um, it's not built overly well. The buttons are really clunky, and they're basically just tactile buttons that are underneath of there. So you can you, you push the button, you can you can kind of hear your, what you're pushing. So, But it's not a, it's not a bad radio. I mean, it's, it's comfortable in the hands and things like that. So a couple of things about the new radio. This is a 2.4 gigahertz radio, and if you've been around for a long time around radio control stuff, you remember back in the old days these really long antennas, and on the end of it they had these like white and purple stripes, or blue and purple, or blue and white. You know, every stripe meant different frequency, and you have to be careful because if somebody walked on top of your frequency, they could control. Well, in 2.4 gigahertz, that isn't the case anymore. They actually bind this. It's using spread spectrum. Um, the distance isn't as good on these. The the stock, this version of the stock, says it has a distance of a kilometer. And I'm going to talk about some upgrades you can do to this outside of what I'm going to do to it that are really easy to, really easy to make that um, can make it a lot, a lot farther. You know, I'm not saying a lot farther, but farther. And there's some other things that this receiver for this from this company doesn't do as well. And I'll talk about that here in a couple minutes, too. So let's take a little look at the radio. You have your um, your four joysticks. These are height adjustable, so you can just turn these knobs right here and adjust them. Most of these are most things now are height adjustable, so you can adjust how high you want them. I just leave it at the bottom because I don't like them spinning them under my fingers. That's why I do that. Um, and this is, you know, see how it's not fixed? It's not spring-loaded like these are? You can change that in this radio. You can take it apart, and you can put the spring. This is what's called mode 2. So mode 2 has a throttle on, on the left, just like this. And then this side's springing in all directions. If you want to go to mode one, in fact, you're from Europe and you're used to fl flying something that's mode one or throttles over here, you can open it up, make this spring loaded to the center, and turn off this spring. What I'm actually going to do when I do my modifications, I'm going to make this side spring loaded as well, so both sides are spring loaded. Because typically in a quad, after you get to a level you want, you don't want to need to go. If it's in the center, it's not going to climb or fall. So uh, when you take off, you push up to get it to the height you want, and then when you let go of it, it's going to turn. It's going to hover in that area, in that same height. Especially if it's a quad that's running, you know, some kind of stationary positioning system like a GPS or uh, my NASA or NASE control. Either one will do that, um, and you can pretty much don't have to worry about it. So sometimes I'm sitting here, and if I'm not being careful, I pull it down a little bit when I'm pushing sideways to spin, and it'll start losing altitude. Or if I keep it spring loaded, I don't have to worry about that so much. I know it's not going to. I'm not going to push sideways like this. And let it go. Just want to do a spin, and now I'm losing altitude. So I'm gonna put it spring loaded. We'll see how it works. I mean, it can do it. I might as well try it and see what it's like. And in my radio setup, I have the center so that it's not as sensitive in the center. So I have to go farther to start doing things. Anyways, I did that already just to try to think, so I didn't have that same problem. So when I first move just a little bit, it's not gonna make fast moves, and the more I go, the faster it's gonna make the moves. So is that just what you can make in the radio uh, for that? So. Um, there's trim there's trim here. We don't really need trim on a quad uh, after you get it set up properly. So it's not really not really needed. We have trim in all four directions. And then there's buttons up here. And all these don't make sense in the quad. But this what I had this button here set up for is this is on both the NAS and the NASA controllers. They have the ability to be in a couple different kind of modes. And depending on which controller it is, depending on what mode it's in, this is a three-position switch. So I have them both set up so when it's the whole way up, it's in GPS fixed mode. And then when it's down in the middle like that, I'm in attitude mode. It basically means it will let me go anywhere I want and not remember where it's going, but it won't let it flip up, fall forward. Or keep, it'll keep it level, basically. But the wind will blow it around. So I'm basically in control of it from that point of view. But if I let off the sticks, it will go into auto level mode. 
and we'll keep going. It's called auto level and the knees, and it's just uh, attitude hold is what it's called in a NASA controller. And then in the bottom, I have it in manual mode, so I basically can make it do anything. I can make it do flips, or I mean, it won't try to correct anything. So that's how I had that configured. Um, on my larger hexacopter, uh, this knob actually controls the gimbal, where it points up or down, and there is no left and right on the gimbal on the on my, on that. So, but that's what that does as well. And then um, I have this switch configured to. Um, uh, let's see, it's different for each each one. Let's see what I got it configured. I think in the in the Naze controller, it's return to home maybe or fail safe. I can't remember exactly. And I think I mean, maybe it's the same in, in the NASA too. But the, um, oh no, in the in the uh, in the NASA controller, this is my flight mode. So there's different flight modes in the NASA. You can have it um, be either. Um, when you're pushing the the stick forward, it's it's going away from you in whatever direction it's going, and pulling the stick back will always come back to you. Where if you put it in uh, course mode, we're not going to course mode. Is what does that? Course mode? No, I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm getting confused myself. Course mode will say uh, this is north, south, east, or west. Or, I'm sorry, north, south, east, or west. Um, when it's in home mode, this is away from home. So whatever direction it's pointing is going to go away from home. If you spin it. Um, you can spin in the whole thing 180 degrees and you go like this, it's still going to go away from home. So, you know, it's facing back towards you and this will always be towards home. And so there's different modes you can put the, the NASA controller in. The NAS has some things that are similar to that, but I haven't experimented with them enough to know uh, exactly how they, how they function. I haven't said anything up on the radio. So, all right. So like I said, very inexpensive radio, under 80 bucks to buy. It comes with one receiver. It's a nine channel uh, device and you can, it's easily hackable. So here's the other thing about these newer radios is this little module right here is an RF module. This is the fly sky that came with it, but I can easily take with two hands. I say easily. It's coming really. It is. There we, go. there we go. All right. That was another kind of tight. Take this module out, the RF module out, and replace it. Now, you see this antenna's in here. I have to, to take the off the antenna on the inside with this particular one. But then I'd put on something like this, which is from FR Sky. And I would put their antenna on here, so I don't have to use that antenna. And I plug it in, and now I'm using their module. And here's the advantage to, to for me in particular uh, for using this module is this radio the, and the receiver it comes with it doesn't have the ability to do anything as far as failsafe goes. So if you go out of range, it's just going to keep on going. It's, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't change anything. There's no way to say, well, hey, when I go out of range, I want, I want to do this. Um, so this particular one and its receiver, which is uh, there's one of them right here that I haven't gotten out of the box yet, uh, will actually allow me to say, when I go out of range, this is what I want it to do. And what that allows me to do is to tell the quad, hey, I'm out of range, go into failsafe mode. Where I can put it in fail safe mode manually, if, it, if it, but only if I'm in range. So by using this other one, this also gives me another um, half to three quarters of a kilometer. But then I'm not worried about that part of it. I mean, it may get me a little bit better. Um, like if I'm flying around somewhere that has a lot of a lot of trees or something like that, it give me a little more control and you know stuff like that. But my main concern with this was that I wanted some kind of fail safe. So if I get out of range. It'll come back home. I just don't want to keep on going with what this one here does. Now, I've never run out of range, but I don't go very far with it either. So um, it's one of those things where um, I just like the safety of having it. And also, say my radio died and my, uh, my battery died in my radio, which these do beep when they get low. If, if it died, it's because I wasn't paying attention or wasn't doing what it was telling me. But um, if this would die and I'd lose contact with the, with the, the quad or the hexacopter, it'd come, it'd come back home with this, with, with this transmitter. So... Um, the nice thing about this is other companies make these things, and there's some companies that make some that go miles and miles and miles. Um, there's one company out there that makes one that I can probably go at least 20 miles. I know people take airplanes and go 20 miles with them. Um, so this one doesn't do anywhere close to that, and it doesn't use spread spectrum. Those are a whole different uh, transmitter, but they do fit into – they use this slot. They don't, they're bigger than this slot, typically. you got to put them in the back, but – they do have the ability to connect in. And you just see there's this, if you look on the back side of it, there's this little pins right here. That's the connector. 
So these RF modules are very common. You can get them from many different companies now. Uh, and many different radios can use these RF modules too. So that's a nice thing about these new radios that are coming out. Now I'll leave this in, this one out because I'm going to take it apart here shortly and, and um, add a board into it with the, with the next video. So that is uh, basics of a radio. And like I said, this is a nine channel. You can probably get, there's a six channel. I wouldn't recommend getting anything less than six channels because if you want to do any kind of um, flight mode with some of the controllers that have flight modes in them, you need something to control that. So you need at least six channels. And if you're going to use a uh, gimbal for a camera, I would I would even go up to eight or nine channels because uh, they're so inexpensive uh, these days to get these radios. And they're easily modifiable. And this particular one is is well known in this this is a fly sky, but it, it comes out, I think Eternity is the other brand it comes out as. So um, it'll look a lot like this, maybe a different colored buttons or something like that, but they're basically um, the same radios inside. So you can still easily modify them. If you go out and look for um, fly sky um, mods, you'll find links. I think it's, I think Eternity is one of them. DX9 maybe is another one, if I remember correctly, that are all the same manufacturer. But you have to go out and look. Don't quote me on that. I only know particularly for, for sure fly sky. And I think Eternity is the other one. And there's a third one that I can't remember what it is, but um, they, they're they all basically the same radio. They look slightly different as far as like the buttons are maybe silver instead of black. And But the inside and the functionality of them is exactly the same. You can easily upgrade them internally, change the backs out on them and all that. So if you're looking, just getting in the quads, don't spend a lot of money on a radio. Um, do something inexpensive, under 80 bucks. This can also do uh, six or eight memories. So you can have six or eight different quads controlled by this one radio. So you don't have to have a radio for each each particular one. In fact, if you're into airplanes or, or when you get into airplanes uh, or helicopters after you get into the quads or, or whatever, this will work with all of those. And it, it has, I guess I think this one says, I think it says on it. Um, no, it doesn't say how many, but I think it's six or eight uh, different memories that it can remember. Some of them remember 16. So it's, you know. It's nice to be able to have one radio to do all those, and you just get just buy one receivers. These receivers you just buy these. These this is a like a, it's not the same ones, but you just buy these, and they're under 20, about twenty bucks probably for the receivers, and you just keep buying them and putting them in your, in your planes and use the same transmitter. So it's definitely a nice way to to keep the cost down when it comes to, to radios and buying something something like this. All right, so I'm going to record this upgrade in a few segments because it's, it'd be boring just to sit here and watch me do all this. So here's um, what I've done so far. I've taken this apart, and to get it to come completely apart, you got to unplug it. So I just unplugged this, and obviously this is the, the back of the radio. So since I'm changing the transmitter and receiver, the actual RF modules, I need to remove the antenna cable, uh, and you'll see it comes in through here. So I'll work on that, get that out. The other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to make it so both sides would spring load to the front, so or to the center. So they like this one here spring loads. I wanted this side to spring load as well. And they are reversible. They don't give you the parts to do it both. So this side I'm going to leave like it is. This side, this side right here, I'm going to leave just like this, um, and not worry about that. But what I did do is on the back there is this adjustment right here that makes this harder to slide. So I tightened it down so it's not as, I just can't bump it by accident anymore. And it, it actually gotta intentionally push it now, which may help the problem that I was having because um, I was just tapping it to the side and when I did that, I'd come down a little bit because it was so loose. Now that I tightened that, that may solve my problem and it may be an, a, an alternative to actually doing it. Now before I go forward here, the um, here are the parts that get used here. This is the first one, and this board uh, is designed just for this radio. And let me see what it says on it. It says uh, it doesn't give you like Turnergy or whatever models, but it's get some smartyparts.com, and it's a 9x programmer. So this is a 9x board. If you look on the back, here's how it works. You see these little pins right here. These are spring loaded. So all you do basically is put this board just like this and and screw it down. So and then this is the USB plug which comes out of the battery. So we put that uh, right up here where the battery goes and 
that's the upgrade for for being able to program it. So, and then the other piece that is part of this upgrade kit is this. I didn't get out of the bag. Let me do it. Is basically a backlight. So there it is. That is a piece of uh, acrylic with a light in there. And then there's this rubber backing, because I'm going to take off part of the LCD, which then this goes behind the LCD. And then this plugs into that board I just had. This this plug right here does. So now I have a backlit LCD instead of just a green uh, dark LCD. So that's all part of the upgrade. So I'm going to go make these changes, get rid of this antenna right here, and uh, I'll come back in as I, get, as I go along the process. All right, so it's taking a little bit of work. Um, this bottom piece is loose, and you'll see down inside there this little white thing. That's the background. I had to tear this foam off that was right here. Actually, you can see it's here is the foam I tore off. Because with the foam in the backlight, it's too thick. So what they do is they sent you more foam, which I put in place right there. And then this is the backlight. And you see the wire coming out of the backlight, and it's actually laying right up here. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this back this panel back together here. Uh, enough to make sure the buttons work, and then I'm going to work on putting the extra board in there. Okay, so though we've gotten a little farther along. First of all, you see right here this little USB plug in the back. It's it fits right in there perfectly. It's like almost like it was designed for that. I mean, I know the board was, but the case had a slot where it fit right in there. And this is going to how, be how we connect to the board we're putting in. So here's what it looks like with the board in. And we are so far. We haven't hooked it up yet. Basically, this is now attached to this board. It's, they sent uh, all the art spacing and everything you needed to, to do this. All you basically do is follow the instructions. So far, it's pretty much just been a screwdriver is all you needed. Um, but they, one of the instructions talked about hooking up the light. And I need to go back and read that again because it talked about cutting this off or possibly still using this. So I don't know. I'm going to have to figure out what, what that really means. But uh, that's the next step is hooking everything up. And then we'll be ready to give it a shot and see what, make sure the rest of the radio still works. All right, there we go. We have our Smarty Ports board in there, and we have it wired up. And I opted to do something a little differently. The Smarty Parts board suggested that I take the uh, two wires from the LED backlight and cut them and then put them into their plug. Well, they didn't provide me a plug, or if I did, they did, I lost it. So, um, And that allows you to control the LED via code for the backlight. But the the light itself came with this little cable that's supposed to connect between here and and there, and basically powers it from the bus, which is what I ended up doing. So basically, it's going to be on all the time whenever uh, the radio is on, which I guess is okay. If I decide later on I want to change it, I'm going to have to extend these wires. One of the reasons I didn't uh, try to bring it over here is the wires are too short for the LED uh, backlight. So I just opted for the way that it was originally to be installed, and. Uh, we can change it later on if we, if we want to, uh, to understand what what it's doing now. So the only thing we've left to do is plug this plug back into the back and uh, turn it on and see if it works. Let's give it a shot. Okay, I haven't screwed it all back together yet because I want to make sure it worked before I did anything. But um, here it is, and you turn it on now, and we get a nice backlight. That is just awesome. So uh, liking it, liking it a lot. Um, and now I'm going to put it the screws back in, and then we're going to try to put some uh, different code on it and see what we can do with it. Um, I did end up with the antenna that took off before, which is actually right here. There's the antenna that took off. And the actual module, which, oh, here it is, right here, wasn't as easy to get out as what I thought. So that means when they're putting them together, they're soldering stuff. So there's the actual uh, RF module. And where is the antenna at? Or did it fall back in? I don't see it now. It was coming out of that hole, but basically it was uh, soldered into here. So I ended up just cutting the wire right here. There it is. Right at the very edge. It saw it just on the other side. So I didn't, I lost and I have a centimeter of wire. I need to put it back together. But um, yeah, it's all soldered. So I did, uh, I just cut it rather than take it apart and desoldering it. It was just quicker considering that. But there we go. We got a radio um, that's been modified and I'm going to go put screws back in it and we're going to start uploading some code to it. Okay, so there's one more modification we have to make to the radio. Actually, to get the uh, FR Sky module, which I'm using right here, I'm going to take out, to um, fit in there. And the problem is, I don't know if you can see it in here, but there is a raised um, 
plastic thing that's in there to protect the pins that are protruding. The problem with that is if you take and look at these two different uh, units, like this, what you will notice is that little area on this one right here is much more indented than it is in this area. Well, that indentation is bigger on this one because of that plastic piece in there. This one won't fit. Otherwise, they are identical to each other. And if we cut that piece of plastic out of there, we'll be able to use any any module like this that's designed um, to be replaceable. Right now, we're going to only use these units. They probably did that to make it proprietary, but it's an easy fix. So while I still have the screws out of it, I'm going to take the back off again, and I'm going to take the back uh, board off of this, and I'm going to cut the cut the uh, plastic out of right here. The reason I'm taking the board out first is because I don't want to cut the hearts of pins. It's the the pins I don't want I want to leave alone, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. All right, so I have the back board off, and I just took a pair of wire cutters and just cut that little hump off because um, even when just cutting it down a little bit, it can't be no more than two millimeters off the bottom. Otherwise, it's a it's a problem. Um, and by doing it, the wires, I mean, the pins are already exposed anyway, so you just got to be very careful putting it in and out. I'm sure that may be part of the reason they did it as well, is they just wanted to be careful with it. But uh, this aren't the way most of the standard modules are, so um, it now looks like the rest of them, everything else that uses those kind of modules. So you can kind of see down in there, I've cut off that, so the pins are sticking out. I'm holding the board up because I didn't screw it back in yet, but I'm going to screw it back in and um, put everything back together and make sure everything works. All right, so there is our radio again, for this time with the module fixed on the back. So here's how you can tell. Turn it over. You see our module is blinking like crazy. Uh, it is not paired to anything yet, so we are now ready to go with the FR Sky um, transmitter. So that's all there was to doing that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go out and we're going to upload some code to this. Now the other thing I need to do as an example is I would need to flash the FR Sky receiver. So here, I got one sitting right here. Let me um, show you what I'm talking about. Get it out of its box container. So this is an FR Sky receiver. Where is it? Right, there we go. Um, and it comes with PPM, which is basically what you do with the servo. You put servos, PPM server, PPM servos, on channels one through eight, and you can control them remotely. And with the quad, you could you could do this with well, especially with the NASA. You can run a cable for each servo into the NASA, and it would, and that's how it, it takes input. However, this is going to be used on the NASE controller, and the NASE doesn't have the ability to do that. So it takes things in through CPCM or whatever the other technology is. I can't remember off the top of my head. But and you can buy that, that version of that from FR Sky. Um, but I didn't know that when I bought it. But the cool thing is you can flash this with that same firmware. Basically, it's the same thing with different firmware. Essentially, same thing. So I am going to go out and I'm going to flash this with the code from FR Sky that has the ability to put it into the PCM mode uh, or CPCM, whatever they, it's called. And um, this will then be able to work with a simple jumper setting. So, um, and basically I'll go through how you set that up and we get to that point. Uh, but I'm gonna walk through programming this and I'm gonna walk through programming this. So that's our next couple of steps uh, is to get this stuff set up. All right, so here is the radio post software upgrade. So we're gonna see, as you remember before, it said FS in here and it was a little hard to use. We're gonna go ahead and turn it on. And you see it's backlit. And he sees as ER9X. That is the firmware that I'm using. And let's see alerts say. Oh. Gotta turn on my buttons the right way. And it says alarms disabled. Okay. All right. So here we are. This is the front page of the new user interface. And you see I'm on Hexa01, which is what I call the first um the, I guess I'll say the multi-copter, <laughs> multi-bladed um, one here. And you can see the interface is a little different down here. You can see as I make adjustments, things are moving around. And you can see if I make trim adjustments, things are moving around. You see the trim down at the bottom. I'll get back to the center, just like that. And uh, it's a nice, a much nicer user interface than before. Let's get... Uh, you see all the different options there. I can change 
which one I'm using. So I'm in hex 01 right there. And here's the menu you can go through. Much, much easier to use than the other thing. Um, the one thing I didn't do out of part is I should just switch these buttons around. This code allows me to take and switch the buttons so that the plus and minuses are reversed. Because in the US, minus is typically to the left and plus is normally to the right. So I can switch those and tell the code that's what I'm doing and it'll follow the same thing. So this is what it does that you get the upgrade. The upgrade was um a little bit challenging only because I was doing it on a Mac. After I got uh, past the some of the initial problems, it worked great. So uh, I now can put multiple. There's a couple different versions of this same. I, would probably, I don't call them versions. I guess I would call them... Um, I don't know what they call them in SVN now. I, I guess it'd be a branch, maybe. But anyways, there's different branches off this main code, and it's different people doing the same thing. Then there's OpenTX, which is a little bit different, uh, but a little bit more complicated to set up. More features, but much more complicated, I think, than what this is. But this is not. This is a great. Uh, I've been playing with it. I really like it uh, much better than what I did with the original code. Uh, again, there's a few things. These are backwards and, uh, you know, things like that. But overall, getting around it, it makes a lot more sense. So definitely recommend going to some open source code. So what we've done in this radio is put open source code in it. We put a backlight in here. We put a programmer inside of it so I can program it with this open source code. And then I've changed out on the back to uh, FR Sky Radio. So we've done all these changes to this radio and took this... $60 radio and made it as good or better than the two and $300 radios for um, not much more. I mean, the code was free to put in here. The programmer cost, what, 30 bucks, and the screen cost under $12. And then the unit on the back was $20. So there you go. You got a $100 radio that's much better than some of the other higher-end radios. So that's what we do with upgrade a radio to a an inexpensive radio to a very, very nice radio. Okay, so that didn't look hard, does it? It wasn't that hard, really. It just took a long time to go through and get the pieces of it and things like that. Um, the flashing took me a little while because I had a problem with my computer. It wasn't a problem with the, with the radio, but a problem with, with my computer. So I do want to show you a couple of things uh, on the Internet real quick. Let me hop over there. There we go. All right, so this is the FR Sky. Um, this is the, the Turnigy name on it, though. It, it really is exactly the same radio uh, as you saw on the on the video there so but it says turner g on it so you can find these couple different places but here's a good example let's see this is 59 dollars, and this comes with a re one receiver but it's the fr sky receiver remember what i said about reason i switched it out was it doesn't know what to do whenever it runs out of range which is why i upgraded the, to the fr sky instead of fly sky or the turner g in this case but you can see for 55 bucks uh, 59 dollars, 60 bucks you're getting a nine channel radio um Let's see. It says it supports helicopters, um, acrobatics, and gliders. But really, a quadcopter can work fine with uh, just a uh, acro or glide, I mean, for the most part. Because they it only need really four for direction. So it's, you know, left, right, uh, forward, backward, up, down, and spin. But then you need other other channels, which is why the 9X is so nice. Because uh, depending on what... what um, Control, like even flight, flight control you use, you uh, get lots of different features. Like if you're using the NASA, you can set it up so that one of the knobs on here controls your uh, your up and down on your camera. You can change your mode from GPS mode to attitude mode to manual mode. You can set up your your direction you're going based on home mode or, or, you know, so all these different buttons can be used for things. And each one of those is actually another channel. And in the case of uh, my hexacopter, I can do two different video channels and there's a switch involved for that too. So it's yet another channel. So the channels add up quick. Um, so nine channels isn't really a lot when you're talking about a really heavily loaded uh, a quad or hexacopter. If you're just on basic flight and you're going to keep one mode, then yeah, a four channel would probably work fine for you. Although I still wouldn't recommend it because you're going to want to do change your modes. Uh, no matter what flight controller you use, you're going to want to go from, you know, um, acrobatic mode to manual mode or um, self-leveling mode. All these different things you can turn off and on via remote. So, I mean, I would look for 60 bucks. You can't go wrong with a radio like this. And then my modifications to it were probably under $50 total for the the uh, RF module and the other receivers 
the board in the board inside from Smarty Parts, which let's see if I can figure out what the price for Smarty Parts is here. Um, let me show you here. Smarty Parts board. Thirty six bucks for the solder programmer board that you saw me put in there. So not not a bad deal. I don't remember where I got the, the light from. Um, it may actually mention it in here somewhere. Let me see if it mentions it. This is not included. Hobby King LED. So um, let's see. Let's go look for this. Hobby King LED. Let's see. Turnergy. No, nope, that's not it either. I don't see where it's at, but it wasn't expensive either. It was pretty inexpensive, actually. Um, yeah, I don't see where it's where it's where it's at. So what is the? <laughs> but you can go find that out there again. It's only a couple bucks. So I think it was like under under 10 if i remember correctly so you know with a 60 dollars radio and 60 dollars with the parts you know 120 dollars for a radio they're gonna you if you bought a name well i don't want to call it name brand it is a name brand but if you bought like um a higher end fataba or something like that you would actually pay you know two and three times that amount and it's probably not not have all the exact same features so it's a, it's a great way to um to save some money, especially if you're just starting out. I mean, I'm all about saving money when you're starting out because you're going to crash it. You may not like what you, what you do with it. I mean, I, I personally love flying these things around. Um, but if we want to go longer distance, we may talk about another episode. There are some products that go multiple. I mean, we're talking 20 and 30 kilometers away uh, that are readily available. They connect to the same radio. Um, don't think there's any modification to the radio. I think there's just a plug that goes in in place of the RF module. It's a bigger RF module that's outside, obviously. It's a lower frequency instead of 2.4 gigahertz. I think it's in the 900s, maybe, or 400s. I can't remember exactly where it's at. But there's a couple things out there that do very long distance as well, which I don't know if I recommend that on a quad anyways because the batteries don't last you know, that long. Uh, I've seen people use those long-distance ones for like long-distance airplanes that you can go 20 miles away. Uh, and come back so that's a little different but if you want to go if you need to go farther than a kilometer and a half or two kilometers then there are other solutions that are available uh, i have no personal experience with them uh, like i do with this stuff right here all right so that's this week and next week we're going to continue down we're going to talk about motors and all the other little bits and parts of the hexacopter and quadcopter whatever and we're going to walk through all that um the the tiny little bits of it and maybe talk about a little bit about fpv and all that kind of stuff as well. So that's all next week. And next week, we're going to start our new segment on learn, learning electronics or electronics 101. I'm not sure what we're going to call it yet. We haven't actually done the title for it yet, but we have some of the segments already recorded and they'll be coming up uh, in next week's show, starting off. Again, if you need some electronic parts, visit zobi.com. Use the code right there, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, right there. And uh, you can save 10% on your first order for them and uh, help them support. They support us and we like to support them as well. And they're a great company uh, to work with. And like I said, going forward, we're going to get some stuff from them to start start testing out. And we'll, uh, things that we're going to show on our show, on our show too, they're going to try to keep in stock so that uh, you can just go there and you can purchase it right, right when you're watching the show. Just click on the link and go over there and get it from them. Be sure to tell your friends about us. Uh, again, we're trying to get our YouTube channel pumped up there. We want to, I didn't get it pumped up as much as we are for downloads in Roku. I want another 50,000 views. <laughs> uh, I know it's going to be hard on, on YouTube. But, um, yeah, spread us around. Like like our videos. Tell everybody about us. Tell your friends about us. you got friends that do this kind of stuff, right? You like electronics. You can't be the only one. Uh, if you've got ideas for future shows, please let us know. Love to get some of your ideas on here. I'd love to get you on the show, actually, with the project. I get so many things, people asking questions about our project I'm working on this. And I never hear back. After they get it figured out, I never hear back. Like, hey, here's what it looks like. Here's how it works. If you're one of those people, please do a video and send it to me. And if it's okay to show it on air, please let me know that, too, and I, I'll do that. And if you can give me a narrative and pictures, that works. And if you have Skype, which it's about everybody on Skype now, right? 
you can always come on the show and come on live on the air and show your project. And you can, if you want to show me pictures ahead of time and just come in and talk about it so I can ask you questions and whatever, that'd be great too. So if you got things like that, please let us know. We'd love to get you on here with us. All right, that's it for this week. We'll see you next Wednesday at 7 p.m. For show notes for this show, contacts, and more, go to the techzen.tv website where you can get show notes for all of our shows. We love to hear from our viewers and listeners. We have an email, a Twitter, and a phone number where you can contact us for each show. For details, visit the techzen.tv website and get the show details. You can also make a video and upload it somewhere like YouTube or Vimeo and then just send us a link. You never know, you may see your video in a future show. You can get all of our shows delivered automatically to your favorite device by going to your favorite podcast website like iTunes and subscribing. Each of our shows also has a YouTube channel you can subscribe to to get regular updates. Our shows are also available on most internet radio networks like Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. You can also watch and listen to our shows on Xbox, TiVo, and Roku. You can even find us on your Zoom.